Yeah, there's nurses that make just as much as nurse practitioners. There's nurse practitioners that make less, but you have to learn how to milk that certificate. And I wasn't disappointed because I expected it. Sometimes you have to take a few steps back to take um, a giant leap forward. We get to save, we get to luxuriate. It was a groundbreaking news for um, New York City Health and Hospitals and nice enough. with more experience, you can demand more. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about the salary of a nurse practitioner. Excuse me. So just to reintroduce myself, my name is Natalie and I am an, an adult geriatric primary care nurse practitioner um, and I work outpatient in a clinic setting basically. Um, so before I get straight into it, um, I would just want to say that when I did start um, nurse practitioner school, there was a lot of um, nurse practitioners that, or rather there were a lot of nurses that I worked with on the floor that had their degree as a nurse practitioner, but opted to um, continue to work as a nurse as opposed to a nurse practitioner. And some of their excuses were the pay wasn't that much different, um, they liked their three day a week flex schedule, or um, they just didn't want the responsibility and the, the role of a nurse practitioner does come with a lot of responsibility because you are wholeheartedly and sometimes you do collaborate with a um, physician but for the most part you are managing the care of a patient in all of its aspects or in its entirety. Um, so um, those were the main three reasons that um, they talked about. So I'm just going to focus on pay right now. Because my degree is outpatient, typically my work week is five days a week. And in comparison to 312's flex schedule, um, there's not a lot of room, I would say, to um, work additional, like part-time or per diem, to supplement your salary. So for example, when I was working um, three days a week, 12-hour shifts, I was an overtime junkie. I love extra money. I feel like... <laughs> Once I do overtime, I could save and luxuriate. I can save and spend, but when I just work three, three twelves, I, I put zero on my W-2, so they pretty much take all my money away, almost half of my check, or maybe 40% of my check, and I'm pretty much left with absolutely nothing. So not absolutely nothing, but a fraction of what my gross salary was, basically. So, um... So over time was the way I combated that. It was the way I was able to feel like I was making a lot of money. And this is pre-COVID because I started nurse. I started being a registered nurse at the age of 22 in 2014. We are now in 2023. So, um, so this is a little pre-COVID talk. Um, and you know, I was able to almost um, double my salary with overtime. And I mean, like I'm an overtime junkie, so I don't expect everyone to be able to do that. But I mean, my base salary. When I like my first year of nursing as an RN, I made maybe 83k. After that, 113, and after 113, I think I made 140, then 150, and this is all pre-COVID. And the most I hit pre-COVID was I believe 150, 160k. This is before COVID even happened, and at the time, my base was about 80 to 90 thousand. So I was able to pretty much almost double my salary once I really got into my overtime money. And it gets addicting and it gets toxic. So, and then as you know, the more you work, you get differentials, experience differential. So, um, you know, and because I work three days a week, it's easy to do overtime. So a lot of nurses that had their nurse practitioner degree felt like, you know, they're probably starting you at 120 to be a 120K a year to be a nurse practitioner. I can... I can make more than that, have more time to myself, more flexibility as a registered nurse. So they would opt to not practice under their license. So that's why I would say getting in, like becoming a, becoming a nurse practitioner um, or enrolling a nurse practitioner one to two years after having experience as a registered nurse is good because you won't be used to making this like extravagant amount of money so you'll be more receptive of a job that um is not much of a difference from what you're making now because um if that makes sense so like a f you know it's like say you've been a nurse for 10 years right your 10-year pay 
in comparison to your base pay as an NP might be very similar and you may not see the benefit of taking that NP job if it comes with more responsibility, you're now working five days a week, you, you don't have your flex schedule, it just might not be enticing. So I just wanted to get that spiel out there. So fast forward, COVID. so I became a nurse practitioner in 2020, COVID hit, the outpatient setting crumbled, it disappeared, there were not no job offerings, nothing like that. So um, once, a nurse, once the outpatient um, setting opened back up, I was then applying to jobs and I was working at a hospital in um, New York City in Manhattan and um, the starting rate for nurse practitioners at that time post-COVID was about, on average, $140,000 a year. Now, I got offered a job, a city job, so New York City Health and Hospital. So I was working for the private sector previously, and as you know, city jobs are known to have excellent benefits, but very poor pay. They pay under, they pay less than what the average um, pay is for that specific role. So whereas a nurse, as nurse practitioner, my colleagues were starting at 140000 a year, I was offered 120000 a year to work for the city. However, a city job is more difficult to get and city jobs have a lot of benefits. So I did take the city job. And the reason why I took the city job is because after 10 years, if I want to retire, after 10 years, meaning after I give them 10 years of service, I can retire um before the age of 65 and still have insurance for my family and i and that was a big um selling point for me because um if i were to be a nurse practitioner in the city hospital i was working at in the city i can do let's say 30 years is what they want you to do so i started nursing at 22 if i want to grab if i want to i did 30 after 30 years you're entitled to retire so if i wanted to retire at 52 I would have to figure out my insurance at 52. Um, so I wouldn't be eligible for Medicare because you have to be at least 65 for Medicare to pay for your insurance. So um, right now, my that hospital will help you pay for COBRA and COBRA is very expensive. So um, you pretty much have to figure that out. And I just didn't, I didn't want to get to the age of 52 and kind of be in like a lull, like, what am, what, like in a pickle. I didn't want to be in a pickle and be like, oh my God, well, I made all this great money. Um, you don't know what illnesses, ailments. I mean, I work in the hospital. You see all different things. Young people, old people coming down with illnesses that really debilitate them. They have medications that are so expensive. It's depleting their funds. And yes, you don't know whether your insurance is good until you need it. But um, I don't know. It was just a selling point for me. I'm not a big risk taker. I um, and you know city jobs like I said are hard they, you know they're hard to get they don't come by all the time and you know the benefits really sold me and you know 120k base salary was um, reasonable for me and then I worked five days a week and then I still kept um, working at the hospital as a nurse part-time to help um, supplement my income so remember I know I've, I've already been conditioned to like work additional to um uh, supplement my salary so this was no different than like what I was accustomed to so in my mind I'm like I'll work full-time as a nurse practitioner here and then I'll work part-time as a um, registered nurse and I can still save and luxury because that's the goal the goal is to be able to save and luxuri <laughs> luxuriate you want to be able to travel have fun do all that fun stuff all right so now so um so under the 121k that I was making at New York City Hospital under the working for the city it comes out to 20 after taxes and everything are gone insurance everything comes out I get $2,600 every two weeks so that's a total of $1,300 a week which is basically you know now travel nurses have travel nursing has blossomed it has boomed it is a it is a thing now and that's essentially not a lot of money uh, to be quite quite honest with you but again I do work part-time in the ICU so I'm able to supplement supplement my income you know I and I wasn't disappointed because I expected it. And again, like I said, I knew there was a lot of nurse practitioners that opted to not work as a nurse practitioner because of this very reason. Um, but, you know, as the Bible says, uh, the battle is for um, not the swift, but those who can endure. So um, I was okay to endure, to sit back and endure what I had to endure so that at the end I could reap my long-term benefits. So fast forward now, about uh, last week, uh, groundbreaking, they were, um, New York City Health and Hospitals were petitioning for better pay to match the rest of New York City, and we won our petition. So now, um, we're pretty much going to be matched with, um, 
with the uh, rest of New York City. So I should be, I am projected to start now with a new salary, um, starting now at 140K. And um, so, you know, now I have benefits and I'll have a decent salary. I mean, again, I do not have kids and I am not a homeowner yet. We are working on that, but I'm not a homeowner yet. So, um, they, you know, the, the extra money I think will be taxed quite hefty because as you know, the more you make, the more they take. Um, so yes, a lot of it will be taxed, but I'm happy that we're now on level with the rest of New York City. Um, but yeah, the first, uh, I can't wait for that first check to come through. And, um, in COVID I've made, um, during COVID I did do some COVID contracts and I did make, you know, up in the 200K during COVID. So, um, it's nice to know that post COVID when the water has settled, that I'll still be, be able to make a good, um, base salary, 140K. And then I can still supplement my salary with my per diem job in the ICU in um the hospital in the city so um yeah um i can't wait <laughs> for it to come into effect and um we'll see what the future holds because you know i do have other academic goals and endeavors that i will be embarking on very soon so i can't wait to share that with you guys too because i do want to maximize my money making capacity do i feel like being a nurse practitioner is worth it i've only been a nurse practitioner for a year and so far it is absolutely worth it i love what i do um i i um it's less labor intensive it's more um you know mental and your intelligence and you know nursing is your intelligence too but it's more coordination of care reaching out to other providers um reaching out for the patient a lot of advocating you know nursing is really big on advocation for our patients um a lot of active listening okay patients coming there i have to assess their mental health and sometimes it is, um, you know, patients are going through a lot. And a mental health assessment or or for patients that want to vent about what's going on in their life in a mental health takes sometimes 10 times longer than a physical assessment. So, yeah, um, it is, it's, 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 it's a lot of work. It's a lot of responsibility. But so is working as a registered nurse. I mean, we are administrating medication in a high-stress environment with multiple patients. We're coordinating not care among uh, different um, disciplines, but we're creating care coordinating um, patient safety and care with um, housekeeping, um, um, di dietary, um, with transport, with x-ray, with MRI, with CT scan. We are, you know, like, I feel like as a nurse, we're built for this. It, it, nursing really primes and preps you for this role. Um, so, you know, I'm happy that, you know, although I was so used to making a great salary as a registered nurse, I'm happy that I was able to, you know, kind of take, take a step back, humble myself and, and see that sometimes you have to take a few steps back to take, um, a giant leap forward. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. I was really patient and honestly, I really wanted the experience and, um, I'm telling you, your nursing experience goes a long way way i mean i mean i draw on a lot of concepts and um principles and things that i've learned in nurse practitioner school but like the core i feel like nurse practitioner school is like my short-term memory but my long-term memory is a register is my experience as a registered nurse and when in doubt i i i common sense and my my um experience as a registered nurse just comes in clutch it helps so much so in a nutshell is it worth being a nurse practitioner yes again i do love what i'm doing um, and as far as pay goes, um, I am anticipating a t about a 20,000 increase in pay. Um, but, um, again, typically, um, you know, prior to this raise, I was making about $1,300 a week and I was able to supplement that so that I, you know, can make much more, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I, I, you know, again, like prior to COVID, I was hitting at least 150. Um, once I really got into my overtime hardcore, at least 150 and up, or sometimes like I would say 140 and up as just a registered nurse. So, um, you know, this is great. 140 plus I'm still working part time in the ICU and, um, we get to save, we get to luxuriate. Um, so yep. That's pretty much my spiel. Um, my next video will be um, 
how to patch your mp boards i got someone in my comment section did ask me to release a video about this but because this was a groundbreaking news for um new york city health and hospitals and nisna really our union new york um, State Nursing Association really pushed and pulled and petitioned and got out there and did what they had to do. I just had to give recognition and really acknowledge that and really talk about the differences in pay now. But um, I would definitely drop the video how to pass your MP boards, how to pass the CCRN. We're gonna, I have some get readies with me for work. Um, the day in the life so will come a little later, but um, we're gonna get the nursing content out. And I, if you didn't see my last video, I did drop a video on my luxury collective back um, collection, classic edition. So please stay, please watch that video. It was pretty good. And I did um, buy some new ready to wear pieces, which I did share in that video. So stay tuned for that too and um yeah so we have a lot of videos coming out so um thanks for watching thanks for all of the support and if you are thinking about being a nurse practitioner um i encourage you to do it um you know initially it sounds like okay maybe the you know the pay don't let the pay deter you remember this is your base pay which you're starting out with your with more experience you can demand more that's another thing with more experience and once you have um you know you build up your resume that base is, is history you can start to demand more i work for the city so i work for a union so i have to you know the the union sets the pay so whatever they're paying that's what it is but you know in the private sector or when you go look for other jobs side jobs um you can really maximize if you really know how to hustle and finesse Listen, you work so hard for your degree. You paid so much money for your degree. You have to milk your degree for everything it's worth. You think I, like, even when I was a nurse, you think I spent four years crying, miserable, and I'm not going to get the most out of my degree? Are you crazy? When I tell you I milk my degree to the core, there was one time I had three jobs at the same time. I had, no, I had, no, no, no. I, well, I was, it was three jobs, but one was ending. I had my full-time RN job. I had a travel job on the side and I was about to start this job. I had literally three tracks job at the same time. Like, like I'm going to get my money back in blood. Are you kidding me? Like, what? No, I spent too much money for this degree, too much blood, sweat, and tears. I'm going to milk it to the core and the hospital is going to give me my money. Yes. Yes, 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 They do tax a lot, but you will get your money back. You will get a good, decent salary to live the life you want to help you, your loved ones, save and reach your goals and encourage other people to do so too. Yeah, so that's basically my spiel on um, becoming on nursing salary, um, nurse practitioner salary. But um, yeah, there's nurses that make just as much as nurse practitioners. There's nurse practitioners that make less. And again, this is in New York State, but you have to learn how to milk that certificate. That piece of paper, you have to milk it to the core, okay? Grab it by the neck and squeeze all the money out of it, okay? <laughs> Literally. But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.